Welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel. I'm Kamika Love from thebudgetmom.com and today we are doing another real life budget. So today we're gonna to be working on a budget from a reader. It's just her and her husband, lower income. The surprising thing is, is her expenses. And I'm so glad that I'm gonna be able to walk you through this real life budget and answer some of these huge questions this reader has. All right, so let's talk about the first step in the budget by paycheck method. Now, here are the steps to the budget by paycheck method, one through nine. So there's nine steps that we're gonna be going over today for this video. So the first one is figuring out your why, your purpose on this journey. Why do you want to get better with your finances? And what benefit does that have for you in your future? So a little backstory about our reader today. Uh, their why is they really want to travel. So traveling is really important to them. They have no children. So traveling together and having those experiences, memories, and to live our lives with freedom. So that's their why. Now a little backstory. My husband Matt and I moved in together right out of high school. When we got engaged, we decided it was important to us that we pay for our own wedding and honeymoon. We were able to save over $20,000 in two years. We used that to pay off our wedding and a wonderful honeymoon to England and Scotland. However, while on our honeymoon, we racked up about $5,000 in credit card debt. I wasn't worried though because of how quickly we were able to save that much money. That's where things went really wrong. I wasn't as motivated to pay off the debt as I had been to save, and my husband also had about $8,000 of credit card debt I didn't know about. We didn't focus on the debt, so we just paid the minimums with a few extra payments here and there. Then I changed my career and started to make less money. In 2019, we had the hardest year of our lives. From emergency surgery, a burst pipe, my husband being laid off, and other horrible life issues, we racked up about another $28,000 in credit card and small loan debt. So this is their beginning of their story and where they're started. Today, we're gonna be looking at what progress they have made, where they are right now, and what situation, income level, bills, debt, and savings that we're looking at for this reader. So the next step is to track and categorize your spending. Here is something that I want to mention. I reached out to the reader because some of their expenses seemed really, really low. And we're gonna be going over this. And in fact, it seems so low that I questioned it. I thought that there might be some spending that might be being missed or not fully tracked. So let's look at their expenses and their income. So this is their total monthly income. As a combined unit, as a couple, they bring in about $4,426. Now before we move on with income, there's a couple of things I want to mention. Matt, the husband gets bonuses. And those are, you know, thrown in there sporadically. She also works and has the ability to work overtime. And if she does, her budget fluctuates anywhere, anywhere between $850 to $1,400 a month. Now, when you're dealing with fluctuating income like this, I've always said, always budget your income for the worst case scenario or the least amount you expect to receive. The last thing that you want to be doing is writing down income that is not guaranteed. Because there are times where maybe that income that isn't guaranteed, you don't get and then you're forced to make your budget and we rework your budget and make it work. So it's just best to budget for the least case scenario. So Jasmine, we're gonna assume her paycheck is 850 a month. That's guaranteed, that's the least amount that she can expect to receive. Matt's paycheck is 1,263. She gets paid bi-weekly and so does he and they get paid on opposite weeks. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to combine finances if you're working with a lot of different paychecks within the month. Let's talk about their bills. This is currently all the expenses that they pay as a married couple without children. So they have mortgage, trash, utilities, 
he, they have two credit cards they are working on and we will go over their debt here in a minute. Gym, a car payment, a Spectrum, which I believe is their internet, Farmers, which I believe is their car insurance, and then their phone. And here are the amounts. All of their bills are $2,034. Now, that leaves more than 50% of their income that can either be thrown towards savings or towards debt. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you that it's going to savings, and here is why I'm doing that. If we look at their savings goals, they have a trip that's coming up to Greece that they want $10,000 saved for. They already have $3,000 of that saved, but they want that by July of next year. So meaning they have exactly one year to come up with another $7,000. But remember, when we talked about their income, they do get bonuses. Now, when I asked them about their bonuses, and I went ahead and printed out, okay, the husband gets bonuses. They're not guaranteed, and they can range from $1,000 to $300 monthly. Currently, what they are doing with those bonuses is anytime they, they do, Matt does get a bonus, they use it for debt. And we're gonna be addressing an issue, a question that they have about this, but right now, if she works overtime and gets the full 1400, or if Matt gets a bonus, they use that extra additional income to pay off their debt. And that's what I would suggest that they do. So that's why in what I'm gonna be showing you with the paycheck bill tracker today, you're gonna to see a lot of it, if not all of it, going to savings. And that's only because I know that they have this extra income for their debt payoff journey with wanting to also save for a ginormous saving goal for that Greece trip. Let's also look at what else they wanna save for. They have an ongoing $100 a month that just goes into an account. It has no purpose, it has no label, it's just $100 to a savings account. And if you know me, then you know that I always say your savings has to have a dedicated goal. Another thing that I notice with this reader is that there's no other dedicated savings goal. They do have an emergency fund of $2,000. That's what makes them feel comfortable. They're fine with that $2,000 for emergency savings. But do you notice in here there's no savings for Christmas? There's no savings for birthdays or ongoing yearly uh, birthdays or any other events. If it were me, my recommendation would to be give this a job. Give this savings some type of label, dedication, a job. So, and then they have the grease trip that they're saving for. Let's look at their variable expenses. This is where I got really confused for a second. They pay only $160 a month for food. Yes, that is correct. When I reached out to the reader, I said, how are you doing this? $160 for two people for the entire month. I must be missing something. I have never seen a grocery budget this low, even for me. So when she reached back out to me, she currently lives in Nebraska. She says keeping it this low is not easy, but it's very important to them so they have other income to throw at other financial priorities. Once a year, they buy their own meat, a bundle like in bulk, from a local, a local butcher. That includes chicken, steaks, roast, pork, and ground beef. And it's about $250, but it covers them for the entire year. On top of that, when she starts to run low on meat, meat, she does check the ads for Aldi and she only gets it when it's on sale. So she waits until she finds a really good deal. She also does online grocery pickup so that she knows exactly what her total is going to be before she is forced to buy. 
and she puts things back if she needs to, to keep it within this budget. She keeps it about $40 um, a week and she only goes once a week. Now, $40 is her, her and her husband both contribute $20, about $20 a week for groceries. So $40 is the com combined between her and her husband. She does meal prep the lunches. She buys mostly frozen vegetables if they aren't in season. She does homemade for almost everything. Homemade bread, broths, pizza crusts. Everything's pretty much homemade. Um, but really, she likes fresh fruits and vegetables. And how she does that is she has her, her own garden full of her favorite fruits and vegetables that they use. So 160 a month for this couple is correct and we asked like three times just to make sure. Here's another thing. Usually when you're used to seeing variable expenses, you're used to us breaking these down into cash envelope categories. What this couple does is they give each other allowances and that allowance is not broken down. Jasmine gets $160 a month and her husband Matt gets $200 a month. Now they choose to spend this however they want. So maybe Jasmine, it's beauty, clothing items maybe. Matt may be something that he's interested in or something that he wants to spend it on, but it's not broken down. Here's my recommendation. This is where it's gonna get really easy to oversend, overspend or get lost in your transactions. I recommend breaking these amounts out. Okay, if Jasmine is getting 160, what is that 160 exactly covering? Is it gas? Is it fun? Is it beauty? Is it clothing? Is it hobbies? What is this 160 covering? And what are the limits on those categories? Now, Matt is $200. What does that include? So that's my recommendation for this couple is breaking out their spending and getting a little more um, into the detail of their spending rather than just lumping it in groups like you're seeing now. But we're going to use this because this is what they gave to us and I'm going to be giving my recommendations as we go. Let's look at their debt. They currently have four types of debt, two credit cards, a home loan, and a car loan. Now their biggest interest rate is credit card number one. It's got about a $6,000 balance. They're currently making about $180 minimum payment and it's due on the 7th. Their lowest interest rate is actually their home loan. And if you look at that, they only owe about $82,000 on their home loan at 3.5% at $799 minimum payment a month for their, their mortgage. Now the biggest debt besides their home loan that they have is actually a car loan. That's only at 12%. So how I prioritize paying off their debt is by highest interest rate first. I want them to kick butt and get rid of the, cr the credit cards that have the highest interest rate. So credit card number one would be the first priority, then the second credit card, then the car loan, then the home loan. Let's look at what this all looks like using the budget by paycheck method and worksheets. So we have July. And this is how I'm going to show you what this looks like when it comes to combining finances or combining paychecks. Now, the green is that we are assuming that she is paying rent with the last paycheck of the previous month. So that means they're using the last paycheck of June to cover this mortgage that's due on the first. We're gonna use Matt's pay. Everything in pink is gonna be paid with this paycheck from Matthew. Everything in blue is gonna get paid with these two paychecks. Now we're combining paychecks. What does that mean? It means that when Jasmine gets paid on the 10th for 850, they are gonna hold on to that money and not spend it. And they're not gonna budget for that income or paycheck until Matt receives his on the 17th. They're gonna combine and budget both paychecks on the 17th. And both those paychecks, because they're both squared out in blue, are gonna cover these expenses. Now the same goes 
with the last paychecks of the month. Jasmine's gonna get her paycheck on the 24th. She's going to set it aside. She's not going to spend it and they're gonna budget both their paychecks on the 31st. So let's look at the paycheck bill tracker for the paycheck we're receiving right here in pink. So we're dealing with just Matt's paycheck. We're paying the trash, the credit card, and utilities. Well, all of that equals 452. Minus the income that they have, they have $811 left. What we decided to do when we looked at this budget is because they, their expenses are so low, we're gonna take care of them automatically in the beginning of the month. We're gonna give them their allowances and their grocery money in the beginning of the month and then they, don't, they can use the rest of their paychecks throughout the month for their goals. So we're taking care of the food, Matt's allowance and Jasmine's allowance. After that, they have $291 left over. Well, don't forget, every month they set $100 aside for their ongoing savings account. And don't forget my recommendation is to label this. Get this to have a dedicated purpose. And we decided the rest of the month from the income from this budget is gonna go towards their first priority debt, which is credit card number one. Their income minus expenses equals zero. This is a zero-based budget. Every dollar of this income is being spent somewhere in this budget. Now let's look at their second paycheck, meaning they are creating three paychecks, one, two, three, every month. The second one, remember they're budgeting here on the 17th using combined paychecks, these two paychecks. So now we're dealing with Jasmine and Matt's paycheck, which gives us an income of 2113. They're gonna pay all these bills in blue, and they have $1,130 left over. Now, as we go along through the rest of these paycheck bill trackers, you will see that they will be able to save the $7,000 that they need for their Greece trip within about five to six months. Even though they have a year to reach it, they can reach that goal in about five to six months because after all their bills are paid, we took care of all their variable spending with the first paycheck of the month, which means this entire, all the extra income from this paycheck can go to Greece, which is $1,130. If we look at their last paycheck bill tracker of the month, which is these two combined, we are using her paycheck and his paycheck. We are covering the mortgage on the first. And if you look at our August calendar, these two, these two paychecks at the end of July are covering these bills in August because they don't get paid again until the 14th. Even though Jasmine's getting paid here on the 7th, don't forget, we're combining these paychecks. So we're not going to use Jasmine's paycheck until the 14th. So technically it's like they're not getting paid here. They have to go all the way to the 14th until they receive and do their next budget. That's why these are in orange to match these two paychecks. So we also, um, after we pay all their bills, they're left with $862. Well, we decided that they need to go from their last paycheck on the 31st to the 14th of the month. So we decided to give them again their spending money their food and their allowances and put that $100 into that ongoing savings account. The rest of that income is gonna to go towards Greece. So in the month of July alone, we had, if you look at their two paycheck bill trackers, we had over $1,300 go to that one savings goal alone. Don't forget, they're also using any bonuses or overtime for their debt. That's what they're using for their debt payoff. But because that money is not guaranteed, we're, for the purpose of this video and for their budgets, we're not putting it as their income. Guaranteed income should not be written down. But it is my recommendation for them that she does, if she wants to hit this huge savings goal for Greece and pay off her debt, I recommend that she works as much overtime as possible and get really intense with her savings and debt goals if she wants to make the savings goal realistic in her life. 
Now let's look into August. All right, so we're looking at the paycheck here on 814th. Remember, we're combining these paychecks. So now with this paycheck, we're paying everything in blue. The credit card, the gym, the car, and the internet. And that's all right here. Because we took care of all of their variable spending for the entire month with this last paycheck in July, guess what? None of their paychecks in August need to cover those expenses. So every single dollar extra can go towards that savings goal. And you would do the same thing with these paychecks in pink. So you would literally use the last two paychecks, the budget on the 28th, to cover the beginning um, bills in September. So that is what this real life budget looks like, organized and using the budget by paycheck method. There is another thing that I do want to address. When I was talking to the reader about her real, this budget, and her numbers. A couple of questions that came, that came up that I thought would be really um, great to address here on YouTube. So here's a couple of her questions. Okay, I've been really aggressive with the debt and haven't wanted to save for that until we pay off the debt. She's talking about her Greece trip. Do you think we should be saving for something like that while we pay off debt? I worry that we'll take too long to pay off the debt if we do that and it'll cost us a ton more in the end. However, I also worry that if we wait until we pay off the debt, we won't able to pay for it at all and will it, and for the trip, and we will inevitably go back into debt just for the trip. So she's saying basically it's a two-edged sword. She doesn't feel like if she saves for the trip, she's not gonna pay off her debt fast enough and it's gonna uh, end up costing her more in the long run. Or if she does go on the trip, she feels like they might not have enough time to save for it, she'll end up going back into debt just for the trip. Going after seeing her numbers today in the real life budget and organizing it into the budget by paycheck method, she can definitely do both. The number one question I wanted to address with this was, do you think we should be saving for something like the Greece trip while they pay off debt? And if you know me and my method and my values and my beliefs when it comes to money management, then you know that I believe life is too short. Life is too short to give up so much of it to struggle and sacrifice. And I'm a firm believer that life, the short life that we have been blessed with and have been given could be gone tomorrow. And because of that, I have made and created the budget by paycheck method into a system that allows you to do both based on the things that matter most to you. With that being said, like I showed you in today's video, I do believe if she stays dedicated to the numbers that she has provided, provided with us today, she can hit this grace saving, the remainder of the $7,000 she needs in about five to six months. She can then use the rest of the year to pay off high interest credit card debt. I believe that she can actually pay off credit card number one and two, which have the highest interest rates before she leaves on her Greece trip. She'll have the money saved where she's not going back in debt to have this memory. Now she's going because her sister invited her to go. So this is memories with family. Um, so that is my answer to that question. I believe you can do both. And looking at realistically the numbers I've been given here today, I believe that is a reality. So she also asked, she works overtime and my checks can range from 850, 850 to $1,400. Normally I base my budget on the 850 just to be safe, but what do you recommend? Would you base it on the smallest amount or how much you think you will make? If you use one number to plan and then you make more or less, how do you adjust that? So you already heard my answer to that in today's video. I think you should always budget your income based on the least amount you expect to receive, the guaranteed amount you are expecting to receive. But what happens after your budget is already created and you earn or get more money in your paycheck than what you budgeted for? The number one question I get with that is, Miko, do I have to go back to my budget and redo it all to account for the income that just came in? No. Why is that? Because your expense trackers 
are going to track that change for you. And it's your expense trackers that you use to close out your budget and analyze where your dollars and what actually happened to where your money went throughout your tracking period. Your budget, remember, is your game plan before you get your paycheck. You should be creating your budget so you have that game plan before you receive your money so you don't spend it care carelessly. If there's changes during that tracking period, maybe Matt, her husband gets a bonus. Maybe she worked a lot of extra overtime and her income was way more than what she budgeted for. Then what you would do is you would track that bonus or the money that you earn from working overtime as an income transaction on your expense trackers. Get that income written down on your expense trackers, but you don't necessarily have to go back and rewrite your whole budget. All right, the next thing that she asks is the same thing. Also, my husband gets bonuses. They aren't guaranteed and can range from $100 to $300 monthly. We have been just putting that into, the, into debt, but what would, you re what would you account for that? We really don't know if he will get it until it hits our accounts. So I do recommend that all bonuses and overtime pay gets put towards debt so they can work intensely on the savings goal that they have for their trip to Greece. And the same thing goes with that. If you do get that unexpected bonus throughout your tracking period, you don't have to go back and rewrite your entire budget. Remember, your budget doesn't have to match your expense trackers. What does need to happen is your expense trackers need to be accurate, not so much the budget plan that you had in place before you received your paycheck. If you found this video helpful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you like it, please subscribe and I thought you were gonna get it. I thought I was I gonna get it! Yes, me too! Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll just end it if you found this video helpful. <laughs> <laughs>